All right, I'm taking you guys on another driving lesson. Are you excited? I'm excited. I am going to teach you how to drive in the city. Okay, a few weeks ago, I made a lesson on highway driving. Highway driving. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to do city driving. Do you know how to drive in the city? Well, actually, driving a car is pretty easy. I mean, at first, it seems really intimidating, scary, right? How do I drive? All the rules, everything going around. It can be information overload. That means there's so much that you have to think about that your brain sort of goes crazy. We call that information overload. Okay, well, I think it's pretty simple actually to drive a car. Really, there's only, I think, four things you need to know. The first thing is, well, you need to know how to drive your vehicle. Every vehicle is different. Okay, I mean, do you actually know how to drive? The first thing is just sit in the vehicle and look look around. What, what is everything for? Steering wheel, what buttons are there? How do you use the radio? How do you uh, turn on your brights? Your brights are your, your bright lights that you use at night. Uh, your normal lights are called your daytime running lights or your, your dims, your dims. If the light is low, then it's your dims. If it's high, then it's your brights or your, your high beams and your low beams. Okay, if it's really bright, those are your high beams. If it's not very bright, those are called your low beams. Okay, so do you know how to use that? Do you know how to use your, your windshield wipers? Okay, look at this. I'm cleaning my windows. Okay, so those things are really important. Every vehicle is different. Some vehicles are manual transmission, right? So you actually have to use the gear shifter and your car will have a clutch. Okay, so that takes a little bit of practice learning how to drive a manual transmission vehicle. Now, most cars in Canada and other kinds of vehicles, most vehicles in general in Canada are automatic transmission. That means you just put the car into drive and then that's it. <laughs> then you just drive. You don't have to change gears. The car automatically changes gears. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing I would say is is knowing signs. There are so many different signs. It's, it's very important to understand what the signs mean. Okay, stop signs, like I just went through back there. Stop signs are very important. If you run a stop sign, that means if you go through a stop sign, that's really bad. You could get a ticket. I mean, if a police officer sees you do that, you know, you're going to get a ticket maybe for like three or four hundred dollars, I think. So you don't want that to happen. So you need to understand the signs, speed limit signs, you know, yield signs. I'll try to put a link down there in the description for all the different road signs that you will see if you're driving in Canada, okay? So it's very important that you, you understand what those signs are or what they mean because before you get your driver's license, you have to take your learner's license. And on your learner's license, you just, you take that test on a computer, right? At, at one of these like places that you go, it's called a registry office, okay? So if you're here in Alberta, you just look for an Alberta registries office. You go in there, you say, Hi, I would like to take my learner's license test. And you just sit in front of a computer and you answer some multiple choice questions. What does this sign mean? And then you select your answer, okay? So it's, it's very important that you understand signs. Now, the third thing is turning lanes. Okay, look where I am right now. See, I've got a green light ahead of me. I want to turn left. So I need to be in the farthest left lane, which I'm in right now. If, if I'm over in that lane and I want to turn left, well, I, I can't do that. Okay, I need to be in a turning lane. That is one of the most important things 
to understand, okay? So I was in the left lane back there. Now I turned into the left lane here. You always need to stay in your lane, especially when you're turning. Sometimes there will be two turning lanes. Okay, right up ahead here, there is an intersection. I want to turn left. So I need to be in the left lane. Now, actually, look at this. There are two lanes here. If I want to go straight ahead, then I have to be over here, right? But I want to turn left, so I need to get over to the left-hand lane. Oh, there's a green light. Let's see if I can make it. So I have two options. I can be in the farthest left or the, the next from the left. And now when I'm turning, I need to stay in the second lane. I can't turn into that lane there, otherwise I might hit someone. All right, so if there's two turning lanes, both vehicles can turn and they have to stay in their lane. And sometimes that can be a little bit confusing because in the intersection, there aren't lane markers on the roads. You can't see your lane. So you have to look ahead around the corner to which lane you need to be in there. So if you're in the, the first lane here before you turn, then you need to turn into the first lane there. If you're in the second lane here, then you need to turn into the second lane over there. A lot of people make mistakes with that and it, it causes accidents. Okay, so make sure you understand that. Okay, now let's take a look at this intersection coming up here. Now, if I want to turn right, see, I have to turn over here already. That's where the turning lane is to go that way on that road. Now, it's too late. I'm already going straight. These two lanes here are to go straight. So, I, I lost that opportunity. I can't turn right now. <laughs> I mean, I could, but I think if the police sees that they they probably wouldn't like it and it's not very good road etiquette etiquette means you know politeness it's, it's not very polite to to do things that break the rules okay so you need to look ahead always look ahead like 10 seconds 15 seconds make sure you're scanning up ahead right scanning means this looking around don't look down, don't text and drive. You'll probably die and you'll kill other people. So it's very bad to text and drive. Um, see now I'm going to change lanes. I'm going to turn into my left lane here because there is less traffic in this lane and I can be closer to the light. Okay, so I like to be efficient when I drive. I don't like traffic. I like to avoid as much traffic as I can. Okay, so it's it's very important to be polite when you drive. Now, actually in Alberta here, most drivers are very polite. They they are polite. Um, and there's a situation that you will come across a lot when you're driving. When you want to change lanes, but there's there's traffic in that lane and, and you you don't know if you can get in. Okay, so look here. Actually, right now, the lane I'm in is coming to an end. See that sign? My lane is coming to an end. Now, I need to turn into that lane. But what if there's a car there? Well, I'm going to turn, and thankfully, there was no car there. But if there was a car there, they would probably, here in Calgary, most drivers are friendly, they would probably slow down and let me in. They would let me in. Okay, and then what I should do is I should just wave like this. Okay, just give a little wave as a thank you. Thank you for letting me in. So anytime you need to merge or change lanes, okay, when one road, uh, when one road sort of meets another road, that's called merging. You need to merge. Like if you're on a smaller road and you're going onto a highway then you need to merge onto the highway. Okay, so most of the time people will be nice and they will let you in and then just give a little thank you wave, okay? Um, so that's the, what was that, the third thing? The first is know your vehicle, 
second is no road signs. The third is um, know how to how to understand lanes, turning lanes, uh, just normal driving lanes. Okay, right now, uh, this is a single lane. Look, I have a white lane, uh, sorry, a white line on that side and a yellow line on that side. If you see a yellow line, that means traffic is coming from the other direction. Okay, so that's very important. You can't go in that way, you can't go over there even more, otherwise, you're going to hit someone. That's called a head-on collision. When two vehicles are coming like this, bang! That's a head-on collision. Okay, so right now, there's two lanes. Okay, so the road changed. First, there was just one lane back there. Now, there are two lanes. Now, look on the, on the, the right side here. That is a solid white line. Okay, that means that's the edge of the road. All that part over there on the other side of the line, that's called the shoulder. The shoulder, just like your shoulder here. Okay, now if you look on uh, the left side of the, the road here, well, I'm in, I'm in the right-hand lane. So that line is a dotted line, a dotted line. That means uh, that, you know, there are other vehicles going to be in that lane. I could switch lanes to that lane. Okay, now a dotted line means you can change lanes. You can change lanes. If it's a solid line, you can't cross that line. Okay, so you know, just like there's a solid line here separating my lane from the shoulder, I can't go into the shoulder. That's illegal because the line is solid. But look on this side, I have a dotted line. That means I can change lanes there. Now, if it's a dotted yellow line, that means there's going to be oncoming traffic, right? So it's dangerous, but the dotted yellow line means you can pass someone. You can pull into that lane to pass someone and then move back into your lane, okay? So here, I don't need to worry about any oncoming traffic because it's a white line. You can see all the traffic is over on that side of the ditch. That ditch, that's the, the divide between both sides of the highway. So this is called a divided road or a divided highway. So I'll change lanes right now. So see those cement blocks dividing this side of the highway from that side of the highway? Okay, that's the barrier. So it's really nice when roads have a barrier like that because it, you know, it, it makes it less risky to drive, okay? Um, and now look about the lanes here again. Now here I have two turning lanes. I'm going to turn left here. Okay. Now, ooh, did you see what that guy did? That was bad. He crossed this two solid white lines to get over there. He cut me off. So that's not good driving. That's an example of a bad driver. You bad driver. I am going to scold you. That's what it means to scold someone. You bad person. Okay, so I just turned from the second turning lane into the second lane here, which is good. It's a good thing to do. Okay, um, now when you change lanes, you always need to remember to shoulder check. This is what it means to shoulder check, to look over your shoulder, because sometimes your mirrors are a little bit deceptive. They can trick you, okay? So when you change lanes, you need to check your mirrors and you need to shoulder check to see if there's someone in your blind spot. If someone is right beside you, sometimes you don't notice it. That's called your blind spot. Okay, uh, so an easy way to remember this is to remember MSSSM. That's what my driving teacher taught me when I was a teenager. Okay, mirror, shoulder check, signal, that means turn on your blinkers. These are called blinkers. Okay, then shoulder check again, then move. Okay, mirror, shoulder check, signal, shoulder check, move. That's what you should do every time you change lanes, right? So it's always good to look around, to scan. You know, where are you going? What's happening? Who's behind you? Who's in front of you? 
Are there, you know, people beside you? Are there any pedestrians? Pedestrians are people walking on the side of the road or, or wherever. So you need to pay attention to a lot of different things. Okay, now I'm driving right into the bright sunlight here. I'm in a parking lot now, okay. So that brings me to the fourth thing I want to teach you, and that is parking. Parking is very important because anytime you start your trip or you stop your trip, you're going to park, right? So that's very important. So here is a very open parking lot. Um, now this is a good place to come practice. Uh, if you, you know, if you don't know how to drive your car very well, uh, I would recommend coming to a parking lot like this and just sort of driving around. Wow, look at all those seagulls. Look at all those seagulls there. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> look at that. I should go over there. Oh no, I don't think I can get into that part of the parking lot. I see some stone blocks there that are blocking off. Well, actually, maybe I can get in there. I'm gonna go see if I can I can run over some seagulls. Do you think I can kill some seagulls? Maybe I can have some barbecued seagulls for for supper today. What do you think? I can I can kill them by running them over and then I can eat them. Any animal that is killed by a car, that's called road kill. Road kill. Okay, so if you hit a deer, which is very common in Canada, and you see a dead deer on the side of the road, which I've seen many, many times here in Canada, okay, that's called road kill. Uh, so, <laughs> look, I, I'm in here now. Look at all these seagulls. Should I try to kill them? Oh, I hope there's no police, otherwise they make it mad at me for trying to kill seagulls. Look at this! Ah! <laughs> that's so funny! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, I don't actually want to kill any seagulls because I like animals. Well, I mean, I don't care too much about seagulls. Seagulls are messy animals. That's <laughs> so funny. Oh man, that was fun. That was the highlight of my driving lesson is trying to run over some seagulls. Okay, so let's get serious again. Let's get serious about driving. You don't want to learn how to kill seagulls. You want to learn how to park. Okay, so in a situation like this, you need to do perpendicular parking. This is called perpendicular, right? I can either go right, I can go left, but it's a, it's a 90 degree angle. So let's say I want to go left here. I'm going to turn. It just takes a little bit of practice. You turn and then you, know, you could stop here. Okay, that's on this side of the, the parking, or I could pull through. Okay, so if I want to keep going here, it's called a pull through parking spot. It's always good to pull through and then put your vehicle in park. Uh, that way, when you leave, then you're facing forward and you don't have to back up. Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward backing up when you can't see. Like if you've got a big truck on this side and a big truck on that side, I mean, you don't even know if someone's walking or you have to back up very slowly and be very careful in that situation. So it's much better to uh, to pull through a parking spot and be parked forward. Okay, so this is called perpendicular parking. Um, it's it's pretty easy. You just need to practice. Anything is, is easy if you practice enough. Now, there are other kinds of parking. Uh, one is called parallel parking. Parallel parking is what you would do on a street in like a residential area. If you're, you know, it's called street parking, right? I mean, this is a parking lot because there are stores and stuff, but if you are just driving around a residential area, residential means there are houses, people living there. Okay, so, I mean, most of the time you just need to park on the side of the road. Okay, that's called parallel parking. If you park in between two vehicles, okay? So if there's a car here and a car here, and you need to go in there, right? Uh, so, I mean, how are you going to do that? A lot of people are so afraid of parallel parking because it's... It's hard. It's much harder than, than perpendicular parking for most people. Okay, so 
Now, I haven't talked a lot about intersections. An intersection is anywhere where roads meet. Uh, there can be a four-way. Whoa, I got my, my mic. <laughs> I had my... Hello, testing. Are you still alive? Okay, so this is a microphone. I had it up here, but it's sunny, and so I wanted to bring down my uh, my sun guard here. My whatever this is called. It, uh, the uh, sun shade or the sun shield something like that I wanted to bring it down and then my my mic fell down okay so we're back on track I'm looking for a place where I can show you parallel parking now I don't know if I'm going to find a place right here because this is sort of a commercial area commercial means stores residential means houses and industrial means factories so if there's a lot of like big factories and stuff that's a that's an industrial area but this area is like a commercial area um, okay now I see up ahead some vehicles parked on the side of the road so it's very easy in a situation like this if you just pull to the side of the road and park Okay, like, I'll, I'll do that right now, okay? I'll pull to the side of the road, and I will just stop, okay? Now I'm going to stop. These people are passing me over there. Now I'm just here. I can put my vehicle into park, right? You should always be you know, within about one or two feet from the curb. That's... Thing on the side of the road that's called the curb you need to be close to the curb if you're too far away that's bad so you should be under half a meter under 50 centimeters it's better to be even closer like 20 centimeters 10 20 centimeters away from the curb that's great right now I'm about yeah maybe about 10 centimeters 20 centimeters away from the curb that's perfect okay so now I'm parked I want to keep going so what I should do is put my vehicle into drive and then remember how do I change lanes I need to, to start driving get into that lane I'm going to check my mirrors I'm going to shoulder check well I've already so I'm gonna signal left okay left signal shoulder check move okay, now I'm back in my lane okay so anytime you want to turn a corner or change things. You, you need to to remember that. Now on a road like this, look at this. This is a good example. You should you should remember this. There are no lane markings on the road. So how many lanes are there here? Well, you might think there's only one lane. It's a big lane. There's only one lane. Well, actually, there are two lanes. Let's say I want to turn right. This is a big road. I can't turn right if I'm here. I I need to turn over here into my right lane before I turn right. If you're taking your driving test here in Canada and you don't understand this, you're going to lose a lot of points. You're probably going to fail your test. Okay, so I'll look here. I have this road also doesn't have any road markings. So this is a small road going into some, some buildings here. This is more like an industrial area. So you need to remember that there's going to be traffic going that way and this way, even though there are no lines on the roads. So you can't be all the way over there. You have to use common sense. It's sort of, it takes practice. It just, it just takes practice, okay? The same with, like, if I want to turn into this parking lot here, I can't turn, like, like look, if I turn, like, here, that's really bad because now this is the the oncoming people's lane. If someone was going to leave this parking lot, they would I would be blocking their way. So you even if there's no lines on the roads, you need to remember that there there are two lanes or maybe more lanes on a road, okay? It's just sort of common sense. Practice driving around with someone who understands driving so they can they can tell you what your mistakes are okay now we're going to turn I didn't put my signal on I'm a bad person I'm going to scold myself you bad 
bad boy. <laughs> okay, you should always signal even if you're just turning out of a parking lot. It's, it's polite, it lets other drivers know what you're going to do. That's the purpose of signaling, right? You're communicating to them that you're going to do something and that helps them make better decisions because they know what you're going to do. Okay, so look at this road again. Now I have a solid yellow line on the left, right? That means there's oncoming traffic in that part. I'm in my like right, I'm in the right part of the road, the right side of the road. Now again, there are two lanes here, even though there is no line. It's just, the road is really wide, it's common sense. If I want to turn left, I need to be right here, right by the yellow line. If I want to turn right, I need to be over in that lane. Okay, that's like one of the most important things about driving is lanes, understanding lanes. If you can understand, you know, how to turn a corner, how to go through an intersection, that is, that's like pretty much the most common thing that you're going to experience when you drive. Okay, so now look, here's a stop sign. Now this stop sign says four-way stop. So that means there's going to be traffic coming from there, there, and straight ahead. Okay, four ways. Now everybody has a stop sign. If it's a four-way stop sign, that means everybody has to stop. So if two people arrive at the, at the same time at different parts of the intersection, the person who arrived first gets to go first. So everybody needs to stop and then the person who got there first can go. Now if two people arrive at the same time, then the person on the, you have to yield to the person on your right. Your right, yield. Look at this, here's a yield sign. Yield means you have to give the other person the way. Okay, so if there was a vehicle coming from there, I would have to wait and let that vehicle pass before I could go. That's called yielding. So if you're at a stop sign and someone else is also at a stop sign, if you arrive at the same time, you have to yield to the person on your right. Okay, does that make sense? If you are on that person's right, then you can go first. He might honk his horn, like go, or, or, or motion with his hands to go. Okay. Um, so that's very important too, yielding. Uh, okay, now I'm going to run a yellow light. See, it turned yellow, but I was already past the point of no return. <laughs> the point of no return. When you're driving, right, you have to make decisions, quick decisions. Is it too late to stop or can I still have some time to stop? Well, I made a decision there. I saw the light turned yellow, but I needed to go. I, I couldn't slam on my brakes. I probably could have stopped if I slammed on my brakes, but I just wanted to go. Okay, usually when the, the light turns yellow, you have like maybe three or four seconds uh, still to go through before the light turns red. It's bad to run a red light. If the light is red and you go through, that's bad. It's called running a red light. Okay, now, to be honest, I don't even know where I am. I've been talking so much, I'm lost. <laughs> okay, I always get lost when I take you out on road trips. But I'm looking for a place to parallel park. Oh, I saw a place there, but this is a sort of a busy road. I, I want to find a quiet street where I can teach you. So I'm going to turn either left or right somewhere here. I don't know where. Maybe I'll turn right here. I'll just take a right here. I'll hang a right. Hang a right means turn right. Okay, now I see some great spots for parallel parking. Look at that. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to try to park right there in between that car and that van. Okay, so I'm going to drive to the end of this street because I can't really turn around here. There's not enough room. I could try to turn around, but then I might block other people who are, who are going. Okay, now I have enough space here to turn around. So I'm going to pull a U-turn, pull a U-E. That means 180 degrees. Okay, 
A U-turn means 180 degrees. Sometimes you'll see a sign that says no U-turns because U-turns can be a little bit dangerous. Very often people use the word UE for short, short for U-turn, okay? To pull a U-turn, to pull a UE. Uh, okay, now where was that situation where I wanted to teach you? Okay, it's coming up right here. So basically when you parallel park, you want to be about a meter away from the other vehicle. So right now I'm about a meter away from that vehicle and I'm going to back up. I'm going to put my signal on. I'm going to put my car into reverse and then I want the back of my vehicle to be about the same, uh, you know, the same as the back of, of that person's vehicle. And then I'm going to make sure nobody's coming from the front. Now I'm going to turn all the way to the right until I'm about a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to back in until my mirror is about just past the back lights of that car okay and then I'm going to keep keep backing and then I'm going to turn in like this I'm going to turn again like that now I'm in between that van and this car. Now I'm going to put it into drive and then I'm going to pull forward a little bit until I'm centered between both vehicles. Okay, the car is there, the van is there. I want to be in between both vehicles. So now there I am. Okay, how did I do? Well, I think I did great. I am probably about this far away from the curb, which is really great. That's perfect. Uh, so that's basically how you parallel park. See, I got it in my first try. Some people need more than you know, one or two tries. That's okay. You just need to practice. Practice makes perfect. So find a quiet street like this with not too much traffic and just practice parallel parking. It can be a very useful skill, even though you don't need it most of the time. Like, if you look at these, you know, there are other places to park. For example, you know, I'll, I'll try to, yeah, I'll show you here, okay. So now I'm leaving, the pair, I should have signaled, I didn't, bad me, okay. Like look at this situation, I can park on the side of the road without having to go through the stress of parallel parking. See, right there, and I'm on the side of the road and I can just park. So most people would look for a situation like this where they don't have to, to do the whole backing in thing. That's a bit stressful for a lot of people. But you should practice that even though it is a little bit stressful. Um, it, it comes in very handy. Handy means useful. It comes in handy, uh, you know, when you might be in a situation where there is only one spot. It might be a very busy road and you only have really really one option. Now when you turn, this is called a T intersection, okay? My road meets this road, like the shape of a T. So you need to look both ways, right? Are there any cars coming? Well I'm gonna go right now because I saw a gap in the traffic. Okay, so now I'm back on my road. So basically those are the two kinds of parking. There is perpendicular parking and parallel parking. Okay, those, those are the two most most common kinds of parking. So that's really that's really I think the the basics of driving. Four things: know your vehicle, understand it. If it's raining, how do you turn on your windshield wipers? Um, understand signs. Do you need to stop? How fast can you drive? You need to obey the speed limits, right? I mean, if the speed limit is like if it's a playground zone, oh no, I'm gonna make the same mistake. I just about put the sun shield. It's really bright and my microphone is up there. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to drive like this with my hand blocking the sun. Okay, so if you're going through a playground zone um, or a school zone, probably the, the speed limit is 30. It's going to be 30 kilometers an hour. Okay, so if you're going faster than that, you're going to get uh, a ticket. <laughs> you're going to get a speeding ticket. 
and that's going to be very bad. Okay, um, so you should always obey the signs, obey the speed limit. Um, the third thing is knowing lanes, which lane. Now look at this situation here. If I want to turn left, I have to be in that lane. If I want to turn right, I have to be in the right lane. If I want to go straight, I have to stay in the middle lane. Okay, you, you need to understand that. If I was in the left lane, and suddenly I decide I want to turn, I want to go straight ahead. I want to, I want to go straight through the intersection. Well, you know, it might be too late. So you need to think ahead which lane you need to be in for whatever you want to do. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now, the fourth thing is is parking. Um, you know, just just learning how to park. So. You know, I think that's the basics of driving. There's, there's obviously a lot of different factors about how to be a, a good driver. There's things you need to know, like how to fill in gas. Well, I made a video on that already. I'll try to remember to, to put the link to that video at the end of this video so you can find out how to fill in gas. Also, um, uh, highway driving. I'll put, put the link to my highway driving lesson at the end of this lesson too because that's very important as well. Okay, um, highway driving and city driving are basically the same, maybe just some small differences. Um, you know, there's so many different things about driving, like a crosswalk. There was just a crosswalk here. Actually, there's one up ahead, I'll show you. So, if you see those white lines going across the road, that's called a crosswalk. That means people can walk there, so you have to be very careful and look to see if there are any people wanting to cross the road or already crossing the road. You don't want to hit them. Okay, so you need to, if there are people there, you need to stop. You always need to stop and let the pedestrians cross the road. Okay, so situations like that are very important. Um, there are a lot of things. Now, if you want to learn the rules of the road, go into any registry office, or I think you can just get get the book online as well. But you can you can ask for a free uh, driver's training book. Okay, it, it teaches you about all the signs, about you know the different rules, the rules of the road. Okay, if I I'm gonna look online after I finish this lesson, and I'll see if I can find a copy of that book, and then I'll post it in the description. Uh, below. Okay, uh, that way you can sort of see what it's like. But if you're here in Alberta, just look for an Alberta Registry Office. Go on Google and search for Alberta Registries, or if you're in any other province, maybe like Ontario Registries or, or something, you'll find a place where you can go in, you can take your road, te or your, your first, your learner's license test, then your actual driver's license test. So everything you need will be at that place. Uh, if you need to get a driver's license, if you're buying a car, like registering your car, uh, all, all those things related to your vehicle, you can do at those places. Okay, so we're back. There are the seagulls. I'm here at a store called Superstore. Uh, I think I'm going to go into the store, maybe buy a watermelon because I really like watermelon now that I'm here. I wasn't planning to buy anything, I was just planning to make this lesson for you, but here I am. I didn't even have a plan before making this lesson where I was going to drive. I just followed my heart. I followed my heart. Okay, So I'm going to practice perpendicular parking here, um, and then I'm going to go and buy my watermelon. So I see a spot here. I'm just going to pull in here from my perpendicular parking and put my car into park and we're done our lesson. Okay, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.